Hello and welcome to the latest episode of the High Bee Buzz. My name's Gavin Ritter and I'm delighted to be joined by a familiar face from years gone by. I mean, joined Hibs initially on loan back in the late 90s. This player signed permanently from Reading in 1999 and went on to make 161 appearances in green and white. He scored 14 goals for the club and captain the High Bees before moving away to Dundee United and then going across the globe to Australia. If you haven't worked out already, Grant Brebner, welcome to the High Bee Buzz. Gavin, thanks for having me. It's great to have you. How are you? How are you doing? Yeah, good, thanks. Good. Um, got over my jet lag pretty quickly and um, coming back to the stadium, you, you quickly settle back in. Yeah, how does it feel being back at, at Easter Road? Does it bring back good memories? Do you know what? It's, um, it, it brings back a lot of memories. Some good, um, some not so good. Um, <laughs> but, uh, you know, I started to feel it even just coming down Easter Road. Um, you know, if you're a Hibs fan, you know, if you know, you know. And um, coming down Easter Road, I started to get that feeling again. And, and even just walking out the tunnel, it's just great to be back. Because mm-hmm. you're, you're a born and bred Hibs fan, aren't you? Yes, yes. Do I, you remember your, your first game? Uh, yeah, of course I do. I, um, well, actually, I, I came in a little bit through the youth team. Mm-hmm. Um, so I remember um, Alex Miller um, era would have been coming in as a... I got a phone call like three hours before a game and and asked if I could come in and sit on the bench in a reserve game. I think I was only 15 at the time. Mm-hmm. Um, so I came in again, it was a Hibs Hearts game and I managed to get about five minutes, which um, was fantastic at the time. But then um, when I came on loan from United, uh, I made my debut against Celtic and um, yeah, just just a feeling that day that, that will never leave me. Mm-hmm. So obviously, so a, a Hibs fan initially, and I wanted to ask about your career and kind of where it started out and in particular, um, your time down in Manchester, because you obviously yeah. went down to, to play um, in the youth team at, at Manchester United. What was that like for an experience? Yeah, oh, like it was, um, I think I've said it before, in any walk of life, whatever job, career path you take, um, you serve an apprenticeship and you learn the ropes. And um, for me, going down to Manchester United at 16 and not, not only playing with, but, but being around, you know, superstars and we're talking you know real superstars and just seeing how humble they were and and how they went about you know their their daily work um and how they trained and and it it just was a a really good time for me and and to get that i mean there was opportunities to stay in scotland but i don't think when man united come calling um you would ever knock it back or or you'd always have that regret if you did yeah what what was it like kind of rubbing shoulders with these superstars, because like you said, there's some, some massive names in that United team. You know, yeah. Cantona, Roy Keane, Peter Schmeichel, obviously the class of 92 as, yeah. as well. Did you, did you learn a lot, a lot off them? Yeah, well, you can't help but, but learn um, from them. But um, look, I, I, we all know how good they were. Um, but the, the, coaching, the coaching methods, the, the, you know, these players were, were quality players. And I think, I think, you know, having worked in youth teams now, People have gone away a bit, a little bit from, and we hear a lot of ex-players talking about it and players talking about it, the, the real desire, the real want, the real effort that it takes to become a professional footballer. And, and at Manchester United, there was an abundance of talented players, but those players you talk about, mm-hmm. they were the ones that wanted it more and they were the ones that pushed harder than anybody else. And, mm-hmm. and to witness that definitely brushed off on me a little bit. Yeah, who was it? in your kind of age group that, that was that was coming through then do you remember um, your, your kind so, of teammates that you so were phil with? neville um was was a year older than me and, and i was quite close with him um but two years above that you know you had your beckham's butt schools mm-hmm. um Giggs, he was a little bit older than that but you know you'd always be involved in reserve games at some point mm-hmm. and, and being in and around those players so um yeah they, they i mean they're the names that everybody knows but you know i was there literally when they were, were learning their craft as well. Mm-hmm. Did you have much interaction with, with Sir Alex then? And, and, and what, was, what was he like with, with, the, with the young boys? Yeah, well, he, he was great. I think, obviously, the fact that I was Scottish, he, he had a little soft spot for me because, because of the fact I was Scottish. His brother, Martin, was here. Um, mm-hmm. Martin Ferguson was wor- working with Hibs at the time. Um, so he always, every Monday, would come in and, and we'd go for breakfast you know, the young players, and he'd, he'd always shout over, you see the Hibs score on the weekend, uh-huh. and he'd, he'd talk about Hibs, he loved it. You know, he, he, he loved talking about Hibs, he loved talking about Scottish football, and, and I seemed to be his little one that he'd, he'd come with. Yeah, definitely. And then, 
you then made the move to Hibs initially mm. on loan. How did how did that come about? And was that a move that you were that you were buzzing with to come back to Edinburgh? Or, yeah, or? yeah. So you, again, you wouldn't think it um, being a youth team player. Um, but Alex Ferguson got me in his office, and um, and because he obviously knew my, my feelings towards Hibs, and he said um, we've we've had Alex McLeish on the phone. Um, Hibs are in a bit of trouble. Um, he's looking for some players to go on loan. Um, I'm leaving it up to you. Um, what do you want to do? And uh, I said absolutely. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, it was it was a case of yes. Um, when when can I leave? And this was the Thursday. He said, well, go home and pack a bag now because I think he needs you for Saturday. Um, so I did. I uh, jumped in the car, made the three and a half hour journey. I think I told my mum and dad in the car on the way up that uh -huh. I was coming home. And uh, yeah, I made my debut on the Saturday against Celtic. Yeah. And then it, what was that first season like at Hibs? Because I know it, was, it wasn't was the best season yeah, yeah, to, yeah. to join. A difficult time f for the club. What was your kind of memories of it? Um, so I played nine games on the, off the three month loan. Um, Look, for a, for a team that, that was relegated, obviously what had happened prior to that, I think Alex McLeish had came in um, only a few games before myself as well. So there was a change in the mindset um, from a team that was obviously losing games, had lost the manager, new manager comes in, a couple of players came in. So as much as the fact that we were, were struggling for results, on a personal level, um, it was the best three months, you know. Mm -hmm really that I could package together in my whole career. I loved every minute of it. I loved running out here and, and you know, looking up in the crowd and seeing my, my, my mates in the crowd, derbies against Hearts, winning that game. Um, so personally, it was it was really good. Mm -hmm. um, but obviously, you know, losing that game and, and to Dundee United and, and being relegated was was a tough blow. Mm -hmm. Then the next step was back to United and then to Reading. Yeah. Um, and you kind of really found your feet, didn't you, at, at, at Reading in terms of I did. Played, played a, a lot of games. What was that experience like or was it? Yeah, I did. Look, I, I made the wrong decision. Mm -hmm. um, you know, at the time you have decisions and having went to England and played in England, um, that was that was in the forefront of my mind that I wanted to continue playing in England. Um, at the time, I thought that was the right decision. And while I don't have any regrets, I, I certainly look at that and, and made a, a, a wrong decision mm -hmm. to, to go to Reading um, when Hibs had offered me the opportunity to come here. Mm -hmm. um, if I had hindsight, you know, back then I, I would have definitely have come here. But I went to Reading and, you know, it was it was good for me, to be honest. It was, um, it, I had to grow up um, very quickly because I was out at Diggs, which I was in Manchester. I was living on my own. Um, so that initial period was good, but um, I quickly started to realise that um, you know, I had made the wrong decision, and, and thankfully Hibs came in for round two. Yeah, because there's a it's a good quiz question, but did, did you probably know it yourself. You scored the first goal at the Majestic Stadium, so there was some some good memories yeah, down there. Yeah, it's an even better quiz question if you can say the name of the stadium <laughs> properly. <laughs> probably starting starting over that. I don't even know if it's still called that, but Majeski Majeski yes. Stadium. There yeah. you go. <laughs> yeah. So as long as that stadium's there, um, you know, I'll be probably long gone and ten feet under. But as long as that stadium's there, um, there will be a little bit of history. Yeah. yeah. So then. The move permanently back to Hibs, was that, did you just jump at that? Was that just the, the right thing, yeah. you think? Yeah, yeah it, it was, um, you know, second time round, um, an easy decision again to make. Um, it was a little bit different um, coming in because there was a lot of new faces um, in the team. Um, but um, it took a little bit of time to get going. Um, but once I did, you know, it, was, it felt normal to be back in again. Um, it was always a little bit more pressure, you know, on myself because I was desperate to do well, I was desperate to, and I put so much pressure on myself to try and play well that I was probably doing things that you wouldn't normally do to try and play well. Mm -hmm. um, but, you know, once I got over those sort of speed bumps, it was it was normal to be back and, you know, I went on to captain the club, which I'll always hold dear to my heart and, yeah, great time. Mm -hmm. We're sitting here in East Road ahead of the, the St Johnson game, which is going to be the largest home attendance in... I think it's 33 years. You played in some memorable games here at Easter Road and during your time at Hibs. Is there any that stand out in particular? Um, look, I think everybody, and I've saw it on your channels as well, everybody still talks about the Athens game. Um, that night, you know, with the crowd and, and the atmosphere of that night. Um, but again, I think personally, 
there's it, it's I spoke about you know walking down Easter Road um, you know I luckily I scored a hat trick for Hibs um, but to score against Hearts um, you know the, this I think everybody that comes to this stadium and, and pays the money to sit in these seats there's certain feelings that you'll you'll never ever feel um, and scoring against Hearts playing against Hearts winning against Hearts you know, I know it sounds a little bit of a, a cliche, but they're the ones that stick out to me. Um, unfortunately, I didn't win a trophy. That would have been, you know, up there. But, um, you know, certainly derbies were, were special nights. Yeah, let's talk about some of, some of those special nights. So the first, first one you mentioned was AAK. Um, going into that, that game, what was the kind of the mood like in the, in the, in the dressing room? And the, was, there a, was there a buzz about it? Because obviously it was the second leg. Or? It was... It was you know, you're testing my memory now. Um, we went to Athens, I don't know, was it a week or two weeks? Well, I think 9-11 happened and we were on the runway to head out there for, for the first game and it was pushed back. Um, I think, you know, air the airspace was shut down. So we were delayed getting out there for the first game. Um, we eventually went out there and even to this day, it was the most hostile environment game that I've ever mm -hmm. been involved in. You know, the, their fans were climbing the fences. Um, but uh, to come back here that, on that um, second leg, and although we didn't get the job done, um, it certainly was, for everybody involved in that club, I wouldn't say put us on the map, but it, it certainly felt like we were, we were on the road to doing something special again. Yeah, because everybody, everybody talks about that game as being one of the memorable nights here at East Road and, and the atmosphere. And, it was Luna who, who yeah, scored they, twice, and he had that, I think, a header at the yeah. end. Did, did, did you think that it was going to be your night when, when you saw that? Well, it's, it's amazing how even, I mean, I don't know how many years it is now since that night, but it's amazing how you mentioned that and straight into my mind, you talk, yeah, Luna scored two and then Luna missed. The yeah. one that, that could have put us through. <laughs> but even to remember that on a night where we didn't win a trophy, um, but to be so significant just tells you what it meant to everybody involved with the club. Mm -hmm. Another one that you mentioned was, was, was scoring against Hearts. Um, you scored at Tyne Castle, mm. is, is, is that, that right? Was it the rebound for the penalty? Is that right? Yeah. In, front of, in front of the Hibs fans as well? Yeah. 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 So um, it was the strangest game. Um, I think we went 4-2 up in the 90th minute with um, three minutes injury time left. So here am I celebrating, thinking I've you know, scored, obviously not the winner, but mm -hmm. the second goal to, to kill the game off. And three minutes later, we're walking down the tunnel 4-4. But... You know, regardless of that, um, to score at Tyne Castle at the Hibs end um, was, was, yeah, it's just an amazing feeling. Mm -hmm. The next game was Scottish Cup away at Tannadice, or it was against Dund Dundee United, and that's when you scored a hat-trick, and it was a perfect hat-trick. Is, is that definitely up there? You mentioned it um, earlier as one of your favourite memories, but what do you yeah. remember from that day? Oh, well, what do I remember? <laughs> but I remember... Two minutes ago, you said I only scored 14 goals for um, for Hibs. So to get three in one game doesn't tell you a lot about my school scoring record. But um, yeah, look, I, to to do that is obviously special. Um, to do it in the Scottish Cup to put us in the next round. Um, I think we went two 0 up. They brought it back to two two. I think with three minutes to go, yeah, made it three two. Um, yeah, they they just look. It's I know it's, it's, it's a bit arrogant and a bit selfish, but like I said, you know, when you're a Hibs fan, when you, you know, feel the pressure of what it's like to, to play for Hibs and, and know the expectation the fans have, um, you know, it's, it's, it is a real pleasure to, to be able to do that and, and feel what it feels like to, to put you in the next round and, and get those achievements like scoring. Yeah, and during your time at Hibs, you would have played with some, some big names, some big characters, likes of you know, Frank Sozzi, yeah. Scott Brown, Gary O'Connor, Riordan. Yeah. Is there any in particular that stand out for you? Um, obviously, Frank um, was a tremendous player. And I, I played in the middle of the park with Frank, and then he went back in uh, you know, the central defence you know, in his last year. But um, one, th one thing with Frank... Um, I haven't seen him since he left, but um, when he became manager of the club and I was playing, and, and I know we're talking about the good times with mm -hmm. Frank, but 
you know, I still, I, there's still a little bit of guilt that I have, the fact that we couldn't, and I'm talking about the team, because mm -hmm. he was a, he was a terrific coach. Mm -hmm. um, and, and I really wanted it for him mm -hmm. because, um, you know, he made me captain um, and at that time. So, you know, he, he did a lot for the club, but, um, you know, I certainly feel a little bit of guilt that we as players couldn't, you know, take his career in management at this club a lot longer than we did. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. What was he like to, to play with? Did you learn a lot off him in, in middle midfield? Well, you couldn't help, but but he was he was a very quiet man. Um, you know, he didn't really, um, you know, offer up a lot of. Um, he didn't really offer up a lot of advice. Let's mm. just say, but what what you saw and how he conducted himself and how he played was the advice. So mm -hmm. you know, what you see is what you get, rather than him putting his arm around you and saying, you know, yeah, come yeah. over here, but. He certainly, um, you know, practiced what he preached. Yeah, there was also the kind of at that time there was the, the golden generation of of, of yeah. Hibs players that were coming through. Stephen Whitaker, as we mentioned, uh, Scott Brown, Derek Ryden, Gary O'Connor. Did you, Stephen Thompson as well? You would have been a, a little bit bit older than them, but could you kind of see that that that. Yeah. they were coming through and that they were going to be yeah. move on. Yeah, without a doubt. And, and you know, if, again, we talk about, you know, things that, you know, in the past and obviously not winning a trophy um, it, it Hibs would have been the biggest one. But second to that was not being able to play with those players longer. Mm. When I left the club, I was only 26. Um, but, you know, you talk about Reardon, O'Connor, Fletcher, Whitaker, Thompson, Brown, um, and to be able to play with them and, you know, at a young age myself, I wasn't, you know, mm -hmm. in the twilight of my career. That, that's certainly something that, you know, looking back now, I would have loved to have played with those young guys and, and see what we could have done. But um, they certainly all went on to have great careers, which is fantastic. Mm -hmm. You mentioned your, your move on from Hibs, went to Dundee United and then across the globe to mm -hmm. Australia. What was that move like for you to, go, to get, a, you know, a totally different change yeah. of scenery, really? Yeah, look, it was, uh, again, you know, you, you can never admit it at the time, but, um, you know, I didn't want to leave this football club and I, I went to another um, club in the Scottish Premier League in Dundee United and I, I just I just didn't enjoy it, to be honest. Mm -hmm. I didn't um, I didn't dry, enjoy driving up to Dundee. I didn't um, wake up every morning and, you know, have the blood pumping through my veins like I did walking in here and, and it was a chore um, to, you know, it's, I know it sounds terrible, but um, it was. So I, I looked to try and, you know, play out of this country um, because no other club would, would give you the feelings that this one did. So, um, you know, I wanted to play abroad and, you know, I said before, France or Italy, you know, an hour's flight would have been great, maybe not in the top leagues, but it would mm -hmm. have been a challenge. And, and then I got the opportunity to try Australia and I thought, you know, I want to sign, but if, if they want me to go out for two weeks and have a look at the club, I'll go out and I'll do a bit of sunbathing on the beach and then I'll say thanks, but no thanks. But I went out um, and we we had a little look at them and within, it was on the back of the 2006 World Cup where Australia did really well. Mm -hmm. um, and within our second game, we were playing in front of 45,000 every week. Mm -hmm. It was crazy. Um, so quickly quickly thought yeah this this is going all right here I, I wouldn't mind staying for a little bit longer and 16 years later I'm, I'm still in Australia yeah I was going to ask what how did it compare initially to, to football in Scotland could you see a difference in intensity or the intensity is the same um, the conditioning is not so mm -hmm. you know players in Scotland can go for you know 30 40 50 games a season um, you know I think the Australian League's 27 games, then a six games final series. You're playing in searing heat. So it's, it's, it's not as robust as the league here. Um, but on the, on the day, you know, any, any A-League team could, could give a Scottish Premier League mm -hmm. um, team a goal. But over the course of a season, Scottish Premier League teams would pull away. But, um, you know, it's, it's not that far behind. The stadiums are great. There's no history, of course. Mm -hmm. it's, it's a 10, 15 year league. Um, but it's, it's certainly we've seen over the last few years there are a lot of players going out there now and, and carving a career. Yeah, I was, I was going to say, have, have you seen big kind of gradual improvements as the times progress with the A-League? Yeah, look, it's peaks and troughs. I mm -hmm. think, um, you know, there's a lot of good players go out and 
Um, unfortunately, it can be a bit of a money grab, um, mm -hmm. you know, because we do have marquee status where, you, you know, you can throw money at certain players. So we've had Del Pieros, we've had Dwight Yorks, mm -hmm. we've had a lot of big names come out there. Um, but um, there's certainly, you know, if you're, you know, a little bit disillusioned with, with football in Britain, it's, it's certainly a good place to kickstart your career again. Mm -hmm. Moving on from playing and, and, and coaching an and, and A-licence a coach, was that, was that something that you've all, always wanted to do, to go into coaching and management? Yeah, 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 absolutely. It was, um, you know, certainly in the youth space, which um, when I retired, um, I managed to slot into a youth team role um, at Mel in Melbourne, um, which was great. Um, but then, you know, you, you, you slowly but surely um, start working your way through the, the coaching ranks at the club and um, when when the axe falls on coaches they sometimes look from within um, mm -hmm. and uh, that came a lot sooner than I needed it and I wanted it to be honest Gavin so I uh, I felt like maybe you know this is an opportunity that you might not get again so I took the head coach role after a, a two or three year stint in the youth team I wasn't ready mm -hmm. um, we were obviously in a COVID bubble at that point in a pandemic. You know, I mentioned it was the hardest lockdown in the world. Um, we needed a lot of players um, in a salary cap league um, that a team that wasn't doing well when I took over. Um, so it was a struggle to, mm -hmm. to put, you know, to get all the jigsaw pieces together. And, and unfortunately, in the end, it didn't work out. Mm -hmm. is, is, is that something that, that you're obviously very, very pa passionate about? And, and Going forward, would you like to come to coach back here, or are you, are you, you mentioned um, you've been in Australia for, for for fourteen years? You're quite enjoying it. Out yeah, there. yeah. It's um, oh look, you would. I don't think anybody would ever knock back a role, um, certainly back in Scotland. But um, I am settled in in Australia now. Mm -hmm. I have a three and a six year old, and for them to to move would be a, a pretty selfish mm -hmm. thing for me. Um, for me, so you know, I've I've had my career. Um, mm -hmm. You know on the pitch and, and in the dugout and while you know I think I'd still love to stay in coaching and in the youth team capacity I mm -hmm. think um, for me now you know being a dad's the most important mm -hmm. thing and, and being around my kids rather than you know pulling them all, all around the globe. Mm -hmm. So when, when you're in Australia then how do you how do you keep track on the highways do you get up and watch it on, yeah, on Hibs well, TV an international subscriber? I, I used to <laughs> I used to do it quite a lot and then um, and then I had a three and a six year old and, and getting up in the middle of the night was normal when there were when there were babies but um, you know I don't know if you're a parent Gavin but um, sleep's really important um, <laughs> when you have two kids so it's definitely um, it's definitely you know the first thing you grab in the morning is your phone to, to scroll through the scores and and see what the result was um, first thing in the morning, and and of, you know occasionally there's the, the big games where you just think no, this is certainly one I, I can't miss. So um, I'm definitely still across results, games, um, and try to watch as much as I can. I know I know you're delivering a match ball later for today's game against St John's, so I won't keep you too much longer. But we've got a few quick fire questions that we want to run through before we finish, if you don't mind. Absolutely. So. To start with, we kind of we kind of went over this one before, but best memory playing for Hibs. Um, scoring the hat trick was great, but it doesn't compare to scoring against Hearts at Tyne Castle. So I'd, I'd say that one. Your go-to pre-match meal? Uh, changed many many times. There was a bit of salmon thrown in there. There was a bit of chicken thrown in there, but I'd, I'd probably say salmon and rice. Salmon and rice. Okay. Well, not much has changed. They still get that at HDC. Excellent. <laughs> um, favorite player that you've played with? So this doesn't have to be hips. This can this can be yeah. during okay. your whole time. Um, um, back in the day, Paul Scholes. Um, yeah, I think you know. Even though he was young at the time, um, you can't look back past playing against that, playing with a mm -hmm. player like that. Was he was he up front? No, he was playing in the he? 10 role and oh, was he? Um, I was probably doing all his work for him and <laughs> he was just playing the passes and getting the glory. Best player that you've played with, would you say Scolese as well or? I thought that was a question, yeah. No, it was fav favourite player. <laughs> What's the difference between favourite player it's and best player? Well, I, uh, you, you, you've got me there. <laughs> Fav favourite player, you might, you might have enjoyed playing with someone because... Favourite player would be, okay, well favourite player would probably be uh, comedy value, good in the changing room. Um, oh, well, um, we'll go post goals as best player. Um, favorite player, John Hughes. 
yeah. um, in the Hibs days. He he was you know he was a he was a bouncer. He looked after you. He was you know he was a comedian. He was um, he was somebody that always just used to make you feel great about yourself in mm -hmm. a game. So definitely Yogi. Yeah. So you know you can see the difference between the two. Uh, yes, I can. Yes. <laughs> um, any superstitions? Yeah, yeah, and that and it was it was for me it was horrendous, uh -huh. um, and it really played with my 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 brain. So anything and everything it would change weekly depending on what happened on the day that, that I would then stick to the next day and then the next day okay. it was aftershave or deodorant or clothes or sitting somewhere or same seats mm -hmm. it, it, it was actually probably a bit too anal yeah favorite manager that you that you played under um maybe big egg alex McLeish. Yeah, he was tough. He was hard on me, and um, probably, and I did say him once a little bit harder than I thought he needed to be. But um, yeah, I would say he would he would be up there. Mm -hmm. If you're you're playing a, a, on a away day, you're staying overnight in a hotel. Who are you choosing as your roommate? Um, oh, back in the day here, it would be oh, a room with McManus, Tam McManus. Um, Gary O'Connor would be probably good value at this stage, just to hear his stories, because Gaz <laughs> has got a few. Um, but yeah, Gaz, deep, anybody. Mm -hmm. Best atmosphere that you've played in? Um, Parkhead, Ibrox, Rangers and Celtic coming into this stadium. Um, you know, and certainly on a, a probably a Hearts game here, um, midweek would would you know under the lights would probably be the best. There's only, there's only a couple more. Um, your idol growing up, so as a kid, who were you, who was your, your number one player, favourite player? Um, Pat McGinley. Yeah? Pat McGinley, yeah. What was it about Again, him? You know, there was better, probably talented players, but I just loved the way he worked. He, he just seemed to chase everything down. He worked hard. He just loved getting about the pitch. He scored goals. Um, and, and he was a shining light in a Hibs team that, you know, was probably under the dark cloud for a lot of years. So for for me, you know, he, he was probably one that, you know, I certainly, and I managed to play with him, which was great as well. Mm -hmm. Final question, yeah. save the best for last. You've got to make a five-a-side team up of players that you've played with at Hibs. Yes, okay. Who makes it? Um, John Hughes, central defender, I'll come back to the goalkeeper. Um, Russell Latapi. We'll put Frank beside Yogi, so there's your two defenders. Russell could float around anywhere. Um, I'd have to be selfish and put myself ah, in there. Ah, you got to put yourself in, yeah. So that's four, so I need a goalkeeper. Um, goalkeeper, Nick Culkin had a great spell here mm -hmm. um, when we did well, so I'd probably say Nick. Sounds like a decent enough team. Brilliant, Gavin. Go on, it's been a pleasure having you. Best of luck um, with whatever com comes next in your career. And, and thanks a lot for coming to East Old and being pleasure. on the Highway Thanks for having me. Thanks, man. Thank you.